Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased today to rise at second reading debate on uh, our private member's bill, Bill 27, and an act to amend the Employment Standards Act. This is a piece, an important piece of legislation, uh, Mr. Speaker, and it's interesting that, um, that, that it's sort of come to this in a sense, because, Mr. Speaker, if we had a greater level of unionization in New Brunswick, uh, many more employees across this province would have paid sick days. Uh, but today, the large proportion of uh, private sector workplaces are not unionized, which means the benefit packages that union workplaces and employees uh, receive are not available. If there was greater unionization, many more people would have paid sick leave. And in fact, there is a role here for the Legislative Assembly, Mr. Speaker, uh, to facilitate greater unionization in the province. Just a simple example, right now, um, to sign a union card, if a, a workplace is being organized, you have to pay, pay a, a fee, a $2, I think. Uh, if that were eliminated, that would be helpful. I won't go into the details, but I'm just giving that as an example. Fast food outlets and big box stores in the province depend on low wages to provide cheap food and retail services. Um, in the absence of protective legislation all too often, the efforts that have been made to unionize workplaces in these sectors, which would provide them with benefits like sick leave, fail as multinational owners simply shut the local outlets down. But that's a focus of another bill. C'est la loi sur les normes d'emploi qui a établi les droits fondamentaux des travailleurs et travailleuses et les obligations des employeurs. De nombreux travailleurs essentiels n'ont que la loi sur les normes d'emploi comme protection. Low-wage workers in New Brunswick who work in non-union workplaces have only the Employment Standards Act as a protection at work. That's it. The Employment Standards, work, Employment Standards Act and that is the responsibility of this legislature, to ensure that it serves employees who are non-unionized in this province well, that it supports their well-being, that it provides the kind of protections uh, that every employee should and worker should be uh, receive. So it, the absence of a union, it creates a specific, special obligation on us as uh, legislators, as lawmakers, to ensure we provide for benefits working people need in non-union jobs. That's why Bill 27 is so important. It will, if adopted uh, in its present form, establish up to 10 paid sick days for employees whose employers currently don't provide them. In New Brunswick right now, there, there is no legal requirement for employers to provide any paid sick days to their workers. Employers in highly competitive sectors do provide paid sick leave as part of a benefit package because of the competitiveness of the sector they're in. Recently, Mr. Speaker, the federal government took action to provide all federally regulated employees uh, in New Brunswick and across Canada up to 10 uh, paid days of uh, medical leave annually. Last year, when I made a similar proposal to this one within a bill that uh, uh, the Green Caucus proposed. There were a number of important changes to the Employment Standards Act, Mr. Speaker. Um, at the time, the minister and the official opposition didn't want to talk about paid sick days, uh, but focused in on the minimum wage part of that bill at that time. So we're back to focusing specifically on paid sick days. The COVID-19 pandemic, in addition uh, to the high number of severe cases of RSV and flu that our province is experiencing, have shown us just how important paid sick leave will be, would be to public health. And so that's why I'm tabling this bill to amend the Employment Standards Act today, specifically to create a legal obligation for paid sick days. There are still many other important improvements to be made to the Employment Standards Act, Mr. Speaker, but today we're going to focus on paid sick days. If a majority of members decide to support this bill, New Brunswick will be joining other provinces who have already adopted some form of paid sick leave. For example, as of January the 1st, 2022, the province of British Columbia legislated 
five paid sick days for all employees in the province who didn't have them. Both Quebec and PEI also require employers to provide paid sick days to various levels. As I said, the federal government impl implemented recently 10 paid sick days for all federal government uh, employees, as well as employees working for federally regulated businesses. I'll just give you some examples, Mr. Speaker, of those for uh, New Brunswick workers working in the airline sector, at airports, the banking sector, and uh, in the telecommunications sector, radio and television, for example. So, you know, you can pick any any company you want uh, is federally regulated in the province to make promise to make it concrete. So employees of Bell and Rogers uh, in New Brunswick now must have paid sick leave under federal law. We here in the Legislative Assembly could make New Brunswick a trailblazer, provincially that is, by joining the federal government and offering 10 say, paid sick days which is recommended and been campaigned for by both the New Brunswick Federation of Labor and the Common Front for Social Justice. Before the British Columbia uh, government brought in its requirement for uh, paid sick leave uh, for all employees in, in their province, they commissioned a report. Uh, they commissioned a report entitled Estimates of the Gross Cost of Paid Sick Day Provisions in British Columbia. It was written by the economist Dr. Jim Stanford, director of the Center for Future Work, who some member members may be um, familiar with. He's often called on to be a commentator as an expert economist on CBC, had a regular column in a number of newspapers across Canada for some time. In his report, uh, he found that the average increase in business cost as a result of implementing 10 paid sick days would be 0.21 percent. He found in his report the following benefits of paid sick leave. One, improved attendance among the colleagues of sick, sick workers who, because they're less likely to become ill themselves, working side by side with someone who's not staying home, uh, but is staying away when they're ill, and so reduces obviously the spread within the workplace, and that means fewer workers are off when there is a major uh, spread of disease like we're seeing right now with uh, COVID, the flu, and RSV. The reduction des absences des travailleurs malades, important, parce qu'ils peuvent s'occuper plus rapidement de leurs besoins grâce aux jours de maladie payés. Les travailleurs malades peuvent se rétablir et reprendre le travail plus rapidement. Thirdly, attendance uh, benefits. Um, really support preventative health care. When workers can use sick, paid sick days to undertake preventative health measures, like getting vaccinated, Mr. Speaker, getting the flu shot, getting their COVID booster, uh, Mr. Speaker, really important. Right now in the province, we know um, a fairly low number of people still, and children still have their, uh, don't have their flu shots, and uh, hopefully, uh, the campaign to uh, encourage those to get flu shots will step up uh, its pace, Mr. Speaker, because um, there's still time, as the public health uh, acting chief medical officer of health said recently, there's still time to get your flu shot. Don't think it's too late, but get your flu shot. Um, of course, uh, if you had paid sick leave, you could also, you know, make your uh, medical appointments and, and other proactive me measures. So. All of these kinds of preventative measures you might take with access to paid sick leave uh, could reduce the need for sick days in subsequent periods. So that was one of the other findings in, in, in Dr. Stafford's report. Um, and he found, and this is you know commonsensical, that in some cases workers uh, will f um, attend work even though they're unable to fully perform their duties when they're sick because they can't afford to stay home. And this actually has measurable impacts in terms of the resulting loss of productivity uh, in the workplace and in the efficiency of the business. Um, looking across the country, uh, Mr. Dr. Stafford estimated uh, that we're talking about billions of dollars per year in lost output, billions of dollars per year in lost output, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, because of uh, 
those who can't work to their optimum, their normal um, pace of work, their more normal uh, effectiveness, uh, because they are seriously under the weather, spreading whatever it is they have to their co-workers. Fifthly, you know, at a time when employers in many industries across this province, and this is what they found in British Columbia, are having great difficulties in recruiting and retraining, uh, retaining staff, uh, it was found in the study in BC that paid sick days actually facilitate recruitment. Um, and why, how is that the case? Well, you can imagine it's an advantage uh, for sure in, in terms of uh, competitively attracting employees if you're uh, offering paid sick days. Uh, and by improving, uh, it also, as he found, improves morale. And uh, interestingly enough, fosters retention in the workplace too with paid sick days. Sixthly, consumers respond favorably to businesses with, res with respect, uh, with this respect, uh, because many people as consumers see paid sick days, Mr. Speaker, as a, a basic benchmark of corporate responsibility. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a positive check mark for, for a business uh, if they know that they're providing uh, paid sick days. At the level of population health, Mr. Speaker, which is uh, extremely important, and uh, here the members of the Green Caucus regularly speak about the need to invest more and place more emphasis on preventative health care. At the level of population health, the absence of uh, paid sick leave, of course, increases the risk of society-wide epidemics of infectious diseases. I think we're seeing uh, some of that today in New Brunswick. And uh, again, with so many people out uh, who just can't drag themselves to work because they're so sick, even if they really can't afford to be off, uh, the failure to provide those kinds of benefits costs businesses many times more money than, than it saves them just because of the large number of people who are off and off for quite a period of time. This recent flu, Mr. Speaker, has knocked people out for a week or two not uncommon two weeks. I think the Premier himself was saying he was close to uh, uh, sick, really sick for two weeks, and certainly uh, I'm hearing that from lots of people around the province. Now, Mr. Speaker, people will say, well, this is a cost to small, this is we cost to small and medium-sized businesses that have been experiencing many, many challenges, especially especially during this pandemic. So the bill specifically, specifically would have the government establish a fund to ensure the costs of paid sick days don't cause additional hardship as they, businesses adapt to these requirements. So there's businesses I've heard of, Mr. Speaker, who philosophically, ethically want to provide uh, paid sick days but feel they just can't uh, manage the cost, and this would enable them to do so as they make that transition, Mr. Speaker. So it's a very important element of this bill to provide support to small and medium-sized businesses to help enable them uh, to comply with what would become uh, a new legal requirement obligation under the Employment Standards Act. So uh, that's Section 2. Section 2 of the bill have government establish a fund to provide transitional support for those who need it. Um, and of course that not only would, would, would apply to small businesses, but this would apply to nonprofits, co-ops and social enterprises equally. En ce qui concerne le soutien du gouvernement aux entreprises, les avantages uh, d'une subvention directe dans ces cas-là donneraient des résultats bien plus importants les subventions plus traditionnelles aux grandes entreprises. Mr. Speaker, think of the fund as an investment in preventative health care to prevent the spread of disease. It's a inv government investment, wisely investing dollars from a public health perspective um, to help uh, address population health, to help advance preventative health care uh, by easing in the requirement for uh, paid sick benefits. Mr. Speaker, my bill to amend the Employment Standards Act will bring benefits to tens of thousands of non-unionized working New Brunswickers. 
whose wages and, wages and benefits are strictly defined by this very legislation, the Employment Standards Act, and only this legislation. And I say wages because that is for those workers who, uh, who work for minimum wage, uh, maybe minimum wage at one job, two or even three jobs to cobble together something approaching a living income. Uh, Mr. Speaker, and that's of course what the Employment Standards Act does. It prescribes what the minimum wage is, and it provides, it prescribes what benefits exist uh, so far. And this is an effort to improve those benefits because, as we discussed, the last bill we brought to uh, amend the Employment Standards Act, Mr. Speaker, which was more uh, far-reaching, uh, more sweeping in its scope, uh, that uh, there's much to be done to improve the benefits for non-unionized non employees in this province uh, through the Employment Standards Act. But this, right now, is probably the most important, meaningful and, and helpful uh, amendment to the legislation that could be made today. So it's interesting. Um, because we're responsible for the Employment Standards Act, the welfare and well-being of employees in this province, all employees, uh, who largely, who, whose terms of work are largely governed by the Employment Standards Act, means their well-being rests on our shoulders. So that puts a pretty big responsibility on every one of us as members of this Legislative Assembly when we think about this concretely and tangibly, think about our constituents on the ground in their workplace, Mr. Speaker, um, those particularly working in low-wage jobs, minimum wage jobs, uh, who can't afford to stay home, can't afford to miss income, uh, Mr. Speaker. And uh, that's, that's a, a sizable responsibility that, that I know all members take, responsibility, respo take responsibly, uh, Mr. Speaker. I just want to make sure all members take responsibility uh, and will, will support this legislation. Working people need paid sick leave. The benefits for both employees and the employers are numerous, as I described. The imperative of paid sick days has become even more urgent in the face of the viral tri trifecta now faced by all too many New Brunswickers. The viral trifecta, which I think uh, physicians somewhere coined that phrase, but it aptly captures uh, what we're facing is if we need to deal with this after uh, the peak of COVID-19 um, with the, the most dangerous um, variants that we faced early on. But we've got it in front of us. We're in it. Uh, and uh, we'll deal with it as New Brunswickers. But uh, a lot of people sure could use our help here, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I'm looking forward to the debate. Um, and uh, indications of support because uh, certainly I'm sure in their hearts all members want to see this kind of benefit be brought uh, forward to support New Brunswick workers. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, if it's supported by a majority of members, we know what the result will be. We'll move forward and uh, hopefully we'll, in the very new fe near future, increase the well-being and welfare of many, many New Brunswick workers and their families. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.